What's up, 90 or 30 service? Hey, wherever you're watching this from, why don't you get up on your feet and let's raise Jesus? Come on, put those hands up. Let's get praising.
be in the house of God. Amen. Welcome everyone, whether you're here in Crown Plaza or you're watching online. We are so glad that you're joining us today in this service. My name is Belle, if we haven't met before, and I'm a part of a team here at Favor. We're going to continue to worship in a bit, but you know, here in Favor, we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. And we love to pray for you. So if you need uh, prayer, whether you're here in the building or you're watching online, you can go to live that favor that church. And we have an amazing people at prayer team. They're just waiting and ready to pray for you and with you. And also you can, if you want to send in your prayer request during the week, you can email us at prayer at favor that church. And we will make sure to pray for you during the week. Hey fam. Can you imagine we're halfway through the year? Imagine that. And you know, life seems to move so fast and we might feel sometimes that we feel left behind. But it's so comforting to know that we have a God that never changed. His love, His mercy, His power, His faithfulness never changes. In Hebrew 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He has been so good in our past. And He is real and He is faithful in our challenges today. And He knows our future. And He has already planned for it. He holds together, church. And if right now you're here in the room that just, you know, you feel the pain in your past. Or you've been struggling or challenges today. Or you're so worried or anxious about what's happening in your future. Could you raise up your hand in heaven just like this? I'm raising my hand because I need prayer as well. Father God, thank you because you are the one who can control our lives, God. Thank you because you are in charge of our lives. Lord, I want to pray for those who are still hurting the past, God. Give them healing, God. The healing in their hearts, Father. Lord, to those facing challenges today, Lord, strengthen them. Give them wisdom and understanding, God. And to those who are worrying, burdened about the future, God, Lord, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Give them rest in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we believe in you. Do what only you can do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's worship Him.
something you wanna feel. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you wanna fill. It's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. It's not a building you wanna fill. It's my heart. So come move this empty space. It's what you wanted all along. Do it all you can do. It's not a building you wanna fill. It's my.
oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do it again. Cause there's no prison wall you can't break through, no. Mountain you can't move All things are possible And there's no broken body you can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible The darkest night You can light up
Jesus. Come on, can you give him praise if you love him? Can you really give him praise? Clap your hands, lift your voice. Shout unto our God with a voice of triumph. We have victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love being in the house of the Lord, whether you're in the room watching online. I love being in his presence and worshiping. You know, the reason why we get to worship, the reason why we come together and we sing these amazing songs and we plead for God to awaken our city, we're we're pleading God, awaken our city to the gospel of Jesus, the good news of Jesus. Today, we're going to take communion. Uh, if you walked in here in the building, you would have been giving one of these weird COVID safe things. If you're at home and you want to join with us in communion, I want to give you just a second to quickly run and get anything that you can get. Because at the end of the day, the, the piece of bread or biscuit and, and the juice, that's not what's holy. It's what it represents. It's a symbol. And the good news of the gospel of Jesus is this, is that we can't earn his love and his salvation. It was freely given to us because of what Jesus did on the cross. And that's what's so powerful about communion, because communion is not, uh, it, it, it's tried to become a religious tradition. The church, we've done a good job of trying to make it just a religious tradition without power, but it's not. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we do as Christ followers when we come around and we remember his body that was broken, his blood that was shed. And because of that, we can encounter the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are saved because of what he did. We have victory because of what he did. We have healing because of what he did. And communion is a time where we come together as a family and we remember what he did, what Jesus did on the cross. Because of what he did on the cross, he made a way for us. His body was broken for us. His blood poured out. And that's why we eat and we drink. And we do it in remembrance of what Jesus did. Because the gospel of Jesus changed my life. It gave me purpose. It gave me an identity. My faith is found in Christ alone. And so today, if you have it, if you're at home and you got it, I want you to take your bread and this juice and I want us to pray. And as we have the biscuit, the cup, whatever it is, I want us today to partake to eat it the way that the Bible told us to do in remembrance of him in remembrance of Jesus so why don't we pray God we thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us to make a way for us to come to you Lord we just throw away any religious tradition that God dulls this moment and Lord, we come back to the heart of what this moment represents, that it's remembering the price that you paid on that cross, that blood-soaked cross. Lord, where you took our punishment, where you took our pain, where you took our sin, where you took our disease. And today, as we eat and as we drink, we do it remembering what you did and living in the freedom that that has given us. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. In your wonderful name, we pray. Come on, why don't we eat and drink today and do it in remembrance of him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, from the front to the back, if you're at home watching, can you lift your hands all over this place? Because the presence of God is here. His Spirit is here right now. 
And we're going to worship. Come on, our hearts, they cry. Sing it out. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that we can remember. We can remember your death and resurrection. Not just because we've read about it in a book or heard someone speak about it, but because we live in the result of it every single day. And for that freedom and for that love, for that free gift of salvation, we thank you and we remember. In your wonderful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, can you give God praise? He is a wonderful God. Amen. Amen. It's so good to have you here today in Crown and watching with us online. If we've never met, uh, my name is James and uh, I love it when the family gathers together. The Bible says in the book of uh, Hebrews, not to give up, gathering together as some are in the habit of doing. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching online, uh, come back to live service. Everything's safe. We got shields and masks. Half the people here are vaccinated already anyway. And, and, uh, and so come back because there's something special about being in the room. You know, we're going to continue our worship by taking up our tithes and offerings. You can all grab your seats in here. And uh, we, we've tried to make giving in our church as easy as possible for you to do. And so uh, all the details are on the screen right now. Uh, but if you have uh, given this week or this month already, or you're planning to give today, uh, why don't we pray 
And uh, you can put your hand on your heart if that's you. And we're going to pray and, and just believe that God is going to take what we give uh, and multiply it incredibly. Amen. Jesus, we thank you uh, that you've blessed us, that everything that we have comes from you. And so today, uh, this last week, or even this month, as we've given uh, to you, God, I pray that you would do a miracle with this finance, that you would multiply it, that it will continue to see souls coming into the kingdom of God, that we continue to see many people encountering Jesus, not just in Manila or the Philippines, but even around the world uh, through our online broadcasts. We thank you for the generosity of your people, God, and I pray that you would bless them uh, immeasurably. In your wonderful name we pray, amen, amen. Well, it really is great to have you here. And uh, you know, there's so many uh, great things that happen in our church. You know, I love, I love uh, prayer, right? And I think that so many people in our church love prayer. Who here, I know we got people watching online, but who here in the building believes that prayer is very important? Can you just put up your hand just so I know who I'm talking to? Awesome, great, great. Who here believes that we need to pray? Like as, as individuals, as a church, come on, raise your hand. Come on, don't fall asleep on me. Raise your hand, great. Here's what's amazing. I, I'm, I do this in every service. I'll do it today in all the services. Everyone online, I'm sure there's a ton of people typing right now. Yes, prayer is great. Prayer is good. Prayer is good. But historically, in the church, uh, prayer meetings are the least attended meetings in the church. It's kind of weird. It's like we all know that prayer is, is necessary. We all know how powerful and how vital prayer is. And yet so many times we don't show up to pray. Well, in our church, if we're going to be a nation influencing church, if we're going to see uh, miracles, signs and wonders, people getting saved every single week, I tell you, we need not a team, but we need a church that will pray, that will get up early, that will stay up late, that will do what's needed to pray. You know, every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., we have our church-wide prayer meeting. And to make it as easy as possible, uh, because that's why Jesus died on the cross for you, to make it as easy as possible for you. I'm joking. But to make it as easy as possible for you, we've put it on Zoom. So you don't need to come down to a building. You don't need to fight the traffic. You can get online in Zoom and you can join with our church in prayer. Now, is a Zoom prayer meeting as good as being live in person with the worship going? No, it probably isn't. But we've learned during COVID that we can actually do great things on Zoom and reach even more people. And so my desire in wanting to do this for our church is that we would begin to stir the spiritual hunger and appetite in our church to want to pray. And so is Wednesday morning prayer the only time? No, but it's a time where we get together and I want to stir the hunger in our church. And so this Wednesday morning, I want to encourage every single person that put up their hand and that said, whether you believe it or whether you were peer pressured into it because you know what the answer is, I want to encourage you to come along, sign on to Zoom prayer meeting. You can do it as you get ready. You can do it with your kids. You don't need to have your video on. All you got to do is wake up. If you are a, a, a late riser, wake up. We have people that wake up at 7 a.m., pray, and then go back to sleep after. Wouldn't you love to be one of those people in life that can do that? And so you can be a part of that. And so the details are on the screen. It's up here as well. All you got to do is favor.church forward slash morning prayer. And I want to encourage you. Why? Why? Because I want to see more people find Jesus in our church. I want to see more testimonies of miracles and, 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 and breakthroughs, supernatural uh, God moments in our house. I want to see finances break open. I want to see our nation heal and, and integrity rise up. So how's all of that going to happen? By prayer. Seeking the Lord. And so I want to encourage that our church to do that, to come this Wednesday and every Wednesday after. Uh, we've got our presence week coming up, which we'll tell you a little bit more about later on. But we love prayer. It's vitally important. And I want to encourage each one of you to come in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Come on, everyone say amen. 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 Well, if this is your first time that you're in church today, welcome 
to church. I'm so glad whether you're watching us online or whether you are in the building today. You know, we've got some of my friends uh, that should already, I guess, be up the front right now. They're standing all over the auditorium as well, and they've got favorite church gift bags in their hand. We've got some gifts and little goodies in there that we want to give you if it's your first time. Uh, but m most importantly, we've got information on our church, who we are, why we do what we do. And at the end of this service, if you bring this bag to the back section, we've got a favorite church umbrella to give you just as a gift to say thank you for coming to church today. So if this is your first time, or maybe you brought someone to church today, as these guys begin to roll through the aisles, could you just stick your hand up and grab their attention? Because we want to get bags into your hands right now. We got hands going up everywhere. Come on, church, can we really welcome everybody for the first time that's here? It's amazing. So glad that you're able to join with us. And if you're watching online as well, please, please, please let us know. Uh, you know, we've got connect groups that operate all over the world online. We got people inside Metro Manila or even outside the NCR in the Philippines that are all a part of our church. And so please let us know because we'd love to connect with you and say hi and get to meet you after the service. In fact, I think we have a Zoom. We have a Zoom lobby that we have after the service for all the new people that if it's your first time, we'd love to connect with you right at the end of the service just to say hi. Thank you for coming along to church. Well, in just a moment, uh, Pastor Willem's going to come up and continue our series, I Am a Leader. Anyone enjoying our series, I Am a Leader? Did anyone take last week's message and play it uh, for their children or for their parents, depending on who you are and what issue you have? Did anybody do that? Well, uh, Pastor Willem's going to come. He's got a great word for us today as we continue this series. But before we do that, why don't we check out this week's edition of Favor News. <laughs> What's up, Favor fam? Welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. There's so many great things happening in the life of our church, so let's get started. We've got exciting dates for you to save in your calendar. Our mid-year presence week is happening July 5 to 9. This is five days of prayer and fasting as we join and pray and believe for God to move in our personal lives, in our church family, and in our nation. Stay tuned for more details coming soon, but please save those dates and start preparing. Do you have a heart for prison ministry? This is an amazing opportunity to join the team at Favorite Church at the Correctional Institute for Women in Mandaluyong. Every week, we have a thousand women tuning into our services from inside the prison. We work hard to connect with these women, help them experience God and grow in their faith. You get a chance to make calls, connect with families, help facilitate Sunday services in prison, and pray for the inmates and their families. If you're interested in being a part of the team, head over to favor.church slash volunteer, click on the prison ministry or email info at favor.church for more information. Room, room, room. Five shapes. Are you guys ready? Go away. Go away. Go away. An upward stroke should be a thin line. And that's how you make a video. You People Night is coming up this Tuesday, July 13th. If you're new to the church, this is the night for you. Whether you've already decided to make Favorite Church home or you're still figuring it out, you get the chance to meet our team, hear about our story, what we value, and where we're headed as a church. To sign up, head over to favor.church slash NPNRSVP. Don't forget, every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., we're gathering on Zoom for our Wednesday morning prayer. It's 30 minutes, so join us as you wake up, enjoy your breakfast, or drive or commute to work. Just head over to favor.church slash morning prayer. 
This week is Connect Week. At Favorite Church, we love our connect groups. They're the best way to make friends, grow deeper in your relationship with God, and stay connected with everything that's happening at church. If you're not yet a part of Connect Group, this is your week. Head over to favorite.church slash connect to get involved. At Favorite Church, we love celebrating milestones. So congratulations to Ian and Humane who just got married. We love you guys. Other than this service, there's so many other things happening in our church. We got services for kids, high school students, and one with Filipino sign language interpretation. Plus, our tagless service is happening at 12.30 p.m. every Sunday. If you want to know when and where these services are happening or get information about our church or stay up to date with what's happening, head over to our website, favor.church, or check out our social media channels popping up on your screen right now. And that's it for Favor News. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good? Doing all right? Come on, I think we need to wake up. Turn to the person next to you and say, God's got something for you today. Just a little bit louder. God's got something for you today. Hey, it feels great to be in the house. I love the holding of the hand, Pastor James and Pastor Kate. Amazing, nice, mu- nice, very, very cute right there. Hey, I've... I'm so excited uh, to, to share God's word today. And, you know, for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about leadership. How many of you guys have been enjoying it? Yeah? We've been talking about how, as Christians, we're supposed to lead as servants. The world may lord it over others, but as Christians, we lead out of serving. And last week, we talked about how, in our families, we submit to one another. That was a great, great message And I know I have to practice it next week. But today, I want to talk to you about a topic that is perhaps one of the most difficult for me personally. And it may be one of the most difficult for you. And this is leading yourself. Leading yourself. How do we lead ourselves? And so oftentimes when we lead other people, we get feedback. We get an applause. Hey, great job. But when you're leading yourself, you have to do the right things when nobody is watching. In fact, when you're leading, you can't lead others if you can't lead yourself. And so this morning, I want to share with you a few simple thoughts that I believe can help you in leading yourself. Number one, leadership is fueled by intimacy. Leadership is fueled by intimacy. Self-leadership starts by being led by God. You know, I was talking to a friend a few weeks back, and, you know, I could tell he wasn't his usual self. You know, I asked him, hey, how are you doing? He said, I'm not doing very well. And, you know, a couple days ago, I talked to him again, and I said, hey, how are you doing? I remembered you weren't doing very well. And he said, well, I'm doing really well now. And he was struggling with anxiety, and he was struggling with worry and work. And and you know, when you're anxious about things, when you're worrying about things, what happens? You worry more. And then you start worrying about what you're worrying about, and you worry some more. And I could tell he was going down this spiral, and I said, hey, brother, what happened? And he said, you know what? I started to do my devotions in the morning. I said, really? And that helped you? He said, yeah, it's kind of strange. I started reading the word in the morning and it just helped all these different areas of my life. And I said, isn't that crazy? Isn't that wild? And I think I heard somebody else say that a man by the name of Jesus, when he said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. And so oftentimes, we like to seek everything else, and we leave the kingdom for last. We say, God, here's my plans. Here's my ideas. And God, why don't you put the icing on it and just bless it, Lord? No, no, no. It's seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. If you want to be a leader, you need to be led by God. 
And we see this in so many different characters, but none more than Jesus. In Matthew 26, Jesus is beginning the end of his ministry, the end of his time on earth, and he is about to die. I don't know what you're going to do in your last days, but here's what Jesus did after he had supper with his disciples. He goes to the garden to pray. And we pick up the story here at Matthew 26, 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and took his disciples. Here's what he said. Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell face and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And you have to hear the emotion in the voice of our Savior. He's saying, My father, if it is possible, if there is any other way this can be done, let this cup Pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And you have to know what happens here because he takes 11 of his disciples and he goes a certain way and he says, well, the eight of you, if my math is right, the eight of you, you stay here. And then he takes three of them, three of the people in his inner circle, and he says, pray with me, but you stay here. Because where Jesus was going, the 12 couldn't help him. You see, it's great to have a posse. It's great to have an entourage. It's great to have a barcada and even a connect group, but they can only help you so far. There are places that you are going, things that you will experience, pain that you will endure, and only God can give you comfort, and only God can give you guidance. And as he went further, he took his inner three. He took the people he trusted the most. And it's amazing to have your inner three. It's amazing to have the people that you can trust, that you can get a little bit more intimate with. But where he was going, he couldn't take the inner three. Where he was going, he couldn't take the three of those guys. You can get close, you can get intimate, but there are places that you will go, and I need you to hear me. There are places that you will go, only God can go with you. There are things that you will experience that only God will understand. There's pain that you'll endure and only God can bring out purpose and in that pain. And when he was alone with God, he fell face first and he cried. He was unedited. He didn't think of what the right words to say, and he fell face down. He said, Abba, Father, let me ask you, are you being led by God? Let me ask you, are you spending time with God? Because if you want to be a leader, you need to be led by God. Your mommy can take you up until a certain point. Your daddy can take you up until a certain point. Your friends can help you up until a certain point. And dare I say, your church, your pastor, your connect leader can take you up until a certain point, but it's God. It is God, and it's only God who can take you forward. It's only God who can understand. Come on, if you agree with me, say amen. amen. You need to come to a point in your life that it's God's voice that matters the most. You see, being led by God isn't just about direction, but it's about assurance. So many times when I spend time with God, it's not just about, God, where do you want me to go? But he tells me you are loved. It's not just about, God, what are my next steps? But God, am I in your presence? And you know what's great? I think one of the best things is when someone believes in you. When someone believes in you, Man, there's nothing more amazing. And my wife, she, she gave me a, a present about 10 years back. And inside of that book, she said, 
I love you, we say often, but let me tell you these four words. I believe in you. And let me tell you something. Ten years after, those words still ring true. Ten years after, I still believe in that. Ten years after, it just makes me feel so good that somebody believes in me. It's like, you know, old folks, you know that Bette Midler song? Right? You are the wind beneath my wings. That's what I feel like when somebody believes in me. And can I tell you this truth this morning? God believes in you. God believes in you. Turn to the person next to you and say, God believes in you. And I was searching the scripture. Is there a verse that says, God believes in you? No, but he died for you. His spirit is in you. It says that while you were still sinners, in other words, while you didn't believe in him, he believed in you. And while you were still sinners, he died for you. And he says to you this morning, I believe in you, my son. I believe in you, my daughter. I believe in you, my child. And just the other day, man, I don't know where your quiet place is, but mine is Starbucks. And, you know, I was... I was just having my quiet time, and, you know, I I really wasn't sure what to preach on this morning. I was like, God, would you please just give me a word? You know, for some, it's so easy. You know, they they can preach a word at at the drop of a hat, but, you know, for me, it's kind of like giving birth. I've never done it before, but I've been in the room. I know how hard it is to respect women. And so I'm there, and I'm just like, God, would you please just give me a word? God, I need some direction. And as I was praying and praying and seeking God for direction, he told me, son, I need you to know this. You are loved. You are treasured. You are mine. You are loved. You are treasured. You are mine. And at that moment, tears began to roll down my face. And it was so awkward because there was a person right in front of me. And I was just there, just crying. And the person is staring right at me, wondering, what in the world is going on? She didn't know that God was telling me that I'm loved. I'm treasured. I, you are mine. You see, when God believes in you, it adds to you as a person. When God believes in you, you can be led by God. And in Psalm 23, it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. You anoint my head with oil. You spread a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I want that. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Assurance. Assurance. You are loved. You are treasured. You are mine. And God wants to lead you, but are you willing to be led? God runs after you, but do you run after God? Because leadership begins by being led by God. Second thing is that leadership is strengthened by healing. Leadership is strengthened by healing. What do I mean by this? You got to know who you are. I got, a, I got a picture I want to show you guys. And, and I want you to see, and tell me what you see. Let, let's put up the picture. Look at this picture real quick. If you see the vase, raise your hand. Okay. If you see the two faces looking at each other, raise your hand. If you see both and you're that blessed, raise your hand. Right? Well, that was kind of easy. Let's show the next picture. An eagle. Let's see the next picture. Is there, is there a next picture? Oh, here you go. Where is it? Oh, it's, it's up on my screen, but it's not on here. Can we put it up? Oh, th- there's no next picture. But is it, isn't it funny that we can be looking at the same thing and, be, and see two different things? We can see the exact same picture But one sees a face, and the other sees a vase. And it's the same when we look at ourselves. Can I look at myself? Am I that fast? 
It's the same when we look at ourselves, isn't it? Whether it's our hurts in the past or how you were treated as a kid, rarely do we have an accurate picture, an objective picture of who we really are. And that's why in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And each one of us, we all have scars and we all have wounds in the past. And God wants to use those scars for his purposes. In fact, it was said that your scars will be used by God for your greatest ministry. But let me tell you, let me, let me put a little caveat to that statement. It's your scars that are healed. It's your wounds that are healed. You are not your scars. You are your scars that are healed. You are not your wounds. What happened to you in the past? That's not who you are. It's those wounds that are healed. That's who you are. And we see this in the life of the Apostle Peter. I love the Apostle Peter, right? He's this brash fisherman. And this tough fisherman one day was running like a little baby being chased by a T-Rex. And if you have that, that image in your mind, just, just keep it right there. That's divine. And as, as, Jesus was being, as Jesus was being tried, what happens? A little girl points up to Peter and says, hey, aren't you with that guy, Jesus? And he said, no. What are you talking about? There's a lot of Peters here. Hey, in my hometown, there's three different Peters. No, you must have gotten a different Peter. And then what happened? She says it again. No, 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 no. Aren't you the same Peter? And this Peter who said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the son of God. This Peter who said, Jesus, if you would just call me from the boat and let me walk on water, I'm going to do it. What happened to his courage? What happened to his confidence? Because in that moment, he denied Christ, and he did it the third time. And here's where I believe we fall into. Everybody either thinks too highly of themselves, or you think too low of yourself. Very few people have an objective view of who you really are. And so if you've got pain in the past, you're going to define your present by your past. And if you've got achievements in the past, maybe you are MVP of the tennis team, you're going to be like, I'm all that and a bag of chips. But you see, God needs you to have an objective view, a real view of who you are. And Peter denies Jesus then. He cowers, and it says that he wept bitterly. But listen what happens to Peter a few years later. 1 Peter 4.14. 4, this is the same Peter that said, Jesus, I don't know you. He says, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. This is the same Peter. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Second Peter 1.10, it says, Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about your calling and choosing for you. Here, for as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. What happened to the Peter? Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. What happened to you? One day you're denying Jesus, and the next day you're saying you won't stumble. One day you're cowering, you're running. Remember that image? You're running like a kid from a T-Rex, but then you're saying, you know what? Be sure of your calling. What happened from the day you denied him through the time you said, be certain of your calling? It's healing. It's healing that happened. Because there on the beach, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And it said that on the third time, Peter said, yes, I love you, but it hurts. Why are you asking me so many times do you love me? Did you not hear the first two times? How many of you understand that the path to healing is painful? How many of you understand 
that the path to wholeness, sometimes it hurts. And the reason it hurts, it's because we come face to face with who we really are. We understand, oh, we're not that good after all. Oh, we're not that amazing after all. Oh, I guess I really do suck. It hurts when you come face to face. And some of you are in bondage because you don't know how, who you truly are. Let me repeat that again. Some of you are in bondage because you don't know how, who you truly are. And we go around, and instead of us going around, it's our representative. We can't be authentic because we're so busy trying to pretend who we're not. And God declares that it is only the truth that can set you free. The truth of knowing who you are. In Romans 12, 3, it says, For the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. Sober judgment. Can you look at yourself with sober judgment? Can you look at who you are and say, well, this is who I am. I'm not good at that. I can get better. I'm amazing at that. Can you look at yourself with sober judgment? And when God begins to reveal this is who you truly are, but despite that, you are loved. When God begins to reveal all your weaknesses, all your shortcomings, but he still says you are treasured. When God begins to reveal all the mistakes you've made, but he says you are still mine, that's when we begin to truly understand that when I am weak, he is strong. Come on, I need you to get this. When we understand that God still loves us and he's got a purpose for us, despite our mistakes, despite our shortcomings, that's when we begin to know that it is in my weakness that his power is made perfect. Come on. I can sense that right now there's people in this room that need to be healed. There's things that you replay in the past. And you're in bondage. Come on, if that's you, would you just close your eyes? I just really feel the Spirit saying, I want to heal my people. Jesus, right now, I pray that you begin to heal, that you begin to restore. Tears coming down the faces of people, representing the desire to want to be whole, God. See the hearts of your people. See the pain. See the struggle, Lord. God, make us whole. I pray that you begin to start healing, Lord, like only you can do. Amen. The third thing I want to share with you, number one, leadership is fueled by intimacy. Number two, leadership is strengthened in the healing. And number three, leadership is made legit in the race. Now, I wanted to pick a, a longer word. I was going to choose the word legitimize, but I thought I'd try to be cool. And so I used the word legit. Do we still use that word these days? It's all right. All right, legit. Yeah, bro. Leadership is made legit in the race. You know what I'm saying? Because the race you run is yours. And it's yours alone. Hebrews 12.1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. Your self-leadership is made legit in running the race. And let me tell you, your race has been marked for you and nobody else. Your race may have similar characteristics 
and turns. It may look like somebody else's, but let me assure you, your race is yours to run and nobody else's. And I once heard somebody say that God will give you grace for your race. So don't look around comparing your race with somebody else's race because God hasn't given you grace for that person's race. Because here's what happens when you begin to compare. And I realize that comparison is from discontentment. And it says in the scriptures to be content in the Lord. And so when you begin to compare, you are discontent with what the Lord has given you. And when you begin to compare, you become envious, you become arrogant, you become jealous, you become discouraged. Why? Because comparison will kill the joy of running the race that God has marked out for you and only you. Don't worry about the other person's race. God's going to take care of that person, just like he's going to take care of you. Because the path that he's marked out for that person is not the path that he's marked out for you. So stop comparing. Be content with what he's given you, with a path that he's called you on. And he didn't say set your eyes on others or set your eyes on those behind you or those ahead of you. It says set your eyes on Jesus. And I know way too many people who have burned out, who become discouraged. Why? Because they've run someone else's race. And that's a tragic thing to see. But can I tell you what's a beautiful thing to see? When someone runs their race. And they run it well. And Jesus said to let your light shine so that all men may see your good works. And let me tell you, as you run your race, you do not run for yourself. Don't be selfish. Just because it's your race doesn't mean it's just for you. Because as you run your race, guess who is blessed? Guess who is favored? As a father runs his race, guess what happens to those around them? As a mother runs her race, guess what happens to her family? As an employee, as a boss, as a friend, as a connect leader, as someone who serves, as you run the race that God has marked out for you, it's not just for your benefit, but the people around you are blessed. They're favored. They're inspired. But you know what? There's something even more beautiful than when we all run. There's something even more beautiful than when you run your race. It's when we all run the race. When we all run the race together. And you know, I grew up loving classical music. And I'm that typical Korean kid. My mom forced me to play the violin. Hated every moment of it. Mom, I love you. I quit. I quit like I quit carbs. And, uh, you know, but a few years ago, you know, we were able to go to Scotland, right? Scotland. <laughs> Pastor Kate, I'm not going to do it. Don't tempt me. And we were in one of the castles. And we happened to, to come into one of the different wings of the castles. And, you know, these castles, right? They're, they're amazing. They've stood for centuries. And in that castle was one of the premier orchestras of Scotland. And I heard the violin, you know, kind of tuning. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how it sounds when I play it. <laughs> sounds like a dying bird. You know, I can hear the trombone practicing. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, 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 mm. Right? And then that one guy who does the one thing out of the whole piece. <laughs> right? He just does that one thing during the entire 15 minutes. And then they started playing together. And I kid you not, this is a true story. But as I heard them playing together, tears began to roll down my face. 
It was as spiritual of an experience that I could have. I've never heard anything more beautiful in my life. And you see, it's the same with you. When one person runs the race, it's like a, it's like, it's, it's just a melody. It's beautiful. And maybe this is what it sounds like. It's beautiful. The melody sounds nice. But when two of you run the race together, man, Jasmine is with Aladdin. There's a duet. And it kind of sounds like this. But can I tell you, when three, four, five, when hundreds of people run their race, when favorite church, every single one of you, whether you're here in the room or whether you're watching, you, 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 me, when we all run the race at the same time, it's not just a melody, it's not just a duet, but it is a symphony. It is an aroma that pleases the Lord. So you need to run your race. I can't tell you this. There needs to be a revelation inside of you that says enough is enough. I'm gonna let my light shine. I'm gonna run my race. I'm gonna stop comparing myself to others. I'm gonna stop living in discontentment because God has given me this one life to live and I'm gonna run the race. And maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, you know what, I can't run the race. I can't do it. You don't understand what's happened to me in the past. I can't run the race. I don't have what it takes to run the race. And let me tell you this morning, do not listen to the words of the enemy because you have everything required right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now, you have everything that is required of you to run the race. And it says in 2 Peter 1.3, His divine power has given us everything. Everything. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a down payment and God's going to give it later. He says, right now, God's divine power has given you everything. And maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, you know what? I want to run the race. Maybe you've been alive, but you're not living. You're existing, but you're not thriving. And God is telling you this morning to run the race. Be led by me. Know who you are. Don't stay where you are, but know who you are. And run the race. Come on, if that's you, and you want to run the race, in the presence of all of God's people, would you just stand? God, I want to run the race. If you don't want to run the race, don't stand, because people around you are standing up. But if you want to run the race, the race that God has marked out for you. The race that, that God has only marked out just for you, nobody else. And there's some people right now in this room, begin to lift your hands, close your eyes. This is your moment with God. And he's saying, you've been running somebody else's race. You've been running your mommy's race. You've been running, running your papa's race. You've been running your barcada's race, and God is saying, enough. Enough is enough. You're going to run your race. You're going to run your race because I've only given you grace to run your race. And if that's you, come on, let me pray for you. God, right now, begin to speak out, begin to cry out, God, I want to run my own race. I want to run my own race. God, give me power. Give me grace for my own race. God, you see every single hand raised. You see every single heart. You see every single life right now. People are tired in this room because they're running somebody else's race. 
And so right now, God, I pray, Lord, that you would give them a revelation. That you would give them a revelation in their minds. That you've given them grace for their race. I see people that are tired. Come on, if that's you, raise your hands just a little bit higher. God, God give us strength. God, give us strength right now. You tell us to run with endurance. It's not a sprint, but it's a marathon. God, I pray that you would give us strength right now. Weary fathers, weary mothers, weary workers, right now I pray that you would infuse them, that the power of your love would come down right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, I believe that God wants to start a revival. But the revival starts with you. God wants to start a revival in this nation, in this city, and in this world. But the revival starts with you. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's begin to pray the words of this song. We're going to sing. The darkest night, you can light it up. Come on, begin to sing this with me. The darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh God of revival, let hope arise. Death is overcome. you to come maybe you've been checking out the church for a while but you haven't said yes to Jesus I want to give you that opportunity today when I talked about self-leadership and God leading you hundreds and thousands of people in our church will attest that God leading them has transformed their lives their lives have never been the same because God is now leading them. And if that's you, if, if you want to say yes to Jesus, with nobody looking around, if that's you, it's, this is your moment with Jesus. If that's you, would you just quickly raise your hand? I just want to pray for you. If you want to say yes to Jesus, I see your hand back there. Anybody else? This is your moment. With all boldness and confidence, if you want to say yes to Jesus. Come on, if you raise your hands, would you just pray with me? 
Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. And I come to you right now. And I'm tired of living life my way. I need a different way. And so God, I pray that you would come into my life, that you would be my God, and I will be your son, and I will be your daughter. I pray, Lord, that you would change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we praise God? Can we praise God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you've made that decision, let me tell you, that is the best decision that you will make, even better than the decision of what to have for lunch after the service. This is the best decision that you have ever, ever made. And, and for you at home, if you've made the decision, let us know, because this is something that you need to do with others. And so if you've made that decision, someone else is going to come up. They want to pray for you. And so, hey, we want to thank you so much. Hey. Today, as you walk out, run the race. Run the race well. Don't run somebody else's race, but run your race. If you got a bag, if you're new, come visit us in the back, and we'd love to give you a gift. Uh, if Hey, if you're not part of a connect group, sign up for a connect group in the back. It'll change your life. You'll find community and family. And hey, I want to throw it back to the favorhood where I'll be there and I'll spend a few minutes there. But hey, thank you so much for coming. Wow, be blessed. Wow, what an amazing service. So I was powerful. Super, super yeah. powerful. Grab it. I super love how Pastor Woolem said that God will give you grace for, for your, your race. race. And I also love how he talked about healing. How yes. yung healing talaga is strengthens your yep, leadership, yep. which is true. Never question. I sorry. I never thought of it before that that healing actually strengthens leadership. But it's true because you have to heal from certain things if you want to move, if you want to grow, yeah. you know, if you want to move forward, right? Yeah. AJ, yep. what it's do you really think? hard to run your own race when you're injured. You have wounds all over. True. So you really have to get that healing. One of my favorite parts here is how we talk about leadership and leadership is being led by God yes so you're also a follower as you are also a leader because if you're ahead you're not led by God yes. and in a few Pastor William will be joining us but before yeah. we interview him and ask him some questions here are some reminders for the week and the following weeks so in July 5 to 9 we'll be having our presence week so follow us on our social media channels to know more about that Yes, also we have New People Night So if you're new, don't leave yet Stay, stay, stay Also we have an online VIP lounge Where we want to meet you We have a digital gift that we want to send to you So if you can hop on to favor.church Slash VIP lounge Our team is ready And yep. super, super excited to greet you Say hi And to get your details So that we can get you connected Because we want to know you more And welcome you into our favor yes. fam. Because you're not just a name You're not just a number but you're a person uh, yep. with a with a story and we want to get to know you and yes. we want to know more about you and speaking of connected this week is connect, connect week. week yes connect week if you're not yet part of a connect group go to favorite.church slash connect and if you're already part of a connect group show up yes what's show your favorite up, thing about connect AJ? your favorite thing about our connect is us just being able to share what happened throughout the past few weeks mm. when we get updated true, with what true. is happening and also us meeting new people we, of, we often ask what's your favorite food yeah. what's your favorite series so we get uh, crowdsourcing crowdsourcing <laughs> <laughs> great thing for the and here Pastor so William here. but my favorite thing also about connect is like you have like a support system yeah, like yeah. a group of people who will who will support you there race. for you yeah, and support for you and throughout the weekend Hey, thank William. you. Thank you. How you doing, man? Um, doing you good, doing good. Well, what happened good. to the person who saw you crying at Starbucks? Oh, <laughs> that was kind of an awkward moment. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of just looking away. And um, you with you? did you use the Starbucks? You know what? Tissue? I was. I just. W I, I didn't even care. I was so like just overwhelmed by God's presence that I just. I didn't care. How did that person look? 
Well, when he was really Did they look away? Well, you know, when somebody's crying, you don't really stare at them. <laughs> you want to stare at them? Yeah, no, you do. You just, but you just, you just kind of like look and like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on? Did he, did you he know, do something wrong? Yeah, like, like did, did he just get broken yeah, up with? Break up, yeah. Right? That's usually the way it is. Should uh, I go for it? Good. I know, I know. Should I buy him Through a the window, just... <laughs> <laughs> Put your hand on the window. No, no, that was good. Oh, Pastor, well, we have a few questions yep. for you. Yep. Um, just, just really two quick questions. Okay. Uh, but one is like, how do you know if you are in the right race? Oh, well, you talked so about good. running a race. That's yeah. So how good. do you know if yeah. you are running the right race? How do you know? I, right I think there's definitely something in the spirit mm -hmm. that'll let you know. You want to take a seat? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. There, and and I. Like, I would say that you're using your gifts. Wow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to enjoy every single part of it, but when you do it, you feel alive. Yeah, fulfilled. So, so for example, yeah. like for me, mm -hmm. preaching, I actually don't like the preparation. Okay. Uh. It's hard. You know what mm. I'm saying? But. Like there's something about it that makes me feel alive. True. Uh, you yeah. know? You're walking in your purpose. Yeah, and, and I think not everyone can say that. True. Uh -huh. True. S somebody has different gifts. You know, yeah. people have different gifts. Yeah. And so I think that's when you know and yeah, I think I think really it's it's something internal. Like you'll know it. Like ah this is this feels good. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Nice. How about Pastor Willem for some people who are running their own race but at the middle of their race they get tired. tired. But what do you want to say to those people? Yeah, and, and so that's why he says run with endurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, you know, a big thing about running the race is that and this is something that, that I think I only understood when I got older mm -hmm. is that you have to have the right pace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. True. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you have grace to run the race, but you also have to know the, the pace, pace with which nice. you can run. Yeah. Yeah. And That's so some great. people, you know, and I used to be like this, you just gotta run, 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 yeah. oh, I'm so tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And so you have to understand, and here's a big thing, you're not God. Yeah. Yes, right? True. And, and yeah. so a lot of people think that if I'm not there, it's not gonna get done. Mm. If I don't do it, it's, and, and so they don't know how to delegate. Yeah. Mm. And they don't know I how to rest. More, yeah. and, and here's the thing, I, I don't think a lot of people take a Sabbath. Uh -huh. mm. Right? And it's the whole important. idea of the Sabbath is that, hey, I'm recognizing that God is God and I'm not. Yeah. And the world still turns even if I'm not making it turn. Yeah. yeah. And so True. I think I think that's huge for people to just take a Sabbath, take a, take break, a break. Yeah. You know, and to understand your pace. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's okay. Really great. just a follow-up question, Pastor William. What do you do to like what are some practical things that you, you do, do to to rest, to take a break? What do you do on your Sabbath? Yeah. yeah so I mean on my Sabbath I, I I love playing golf. Wow. And, wow. So, and so there's things that take away from you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's work, parenting. Yes. You may you may love your kids, but ultimately it takes away from True. you. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, and so you have to understand the things that fill you up. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I remember making a list of the three things that took away from me and the three ah. things that filled me up. Mm -hmm. And so on my Sabbath, I would choose to do those the three, three things. things. I would choose one. Mm. And so, you, you know, I would try to fit it into my schedule. Mm. Nice. Um, but also, like, during the week, you know, I, you have to know your rhythm. Yeah. Like, you can't light the candle on both ends. True. Uh -huh. And so, when I come home, I usually kind of just turn off my phone. <laughs> because I know I can't be two places at once. I, I yeah. can't be yep. with my kids and doing uh, it at the same time. Yes, yeah. so good. Or yep. else I'm like, I'm divided. Yeah. Um, and my kids are going to complain that they don't have a father. <laughs> and, and, you know, I can't have that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just put different boundaries on yeah. my life. Yeah, it's great. Healthy yeah. boundaries. Try yeah, great. Try. Thank you so much for sharing, Pastor sure, William. Sure. And thank, thank you guys you. so much for tuning in. We really, really enjoyed our Sunday and we hope you guys enjoyed too. We love you, Favorite mm. Fam. Oh, don't forget, we also have a 12.30 p.m. Taglish service and a 3 p.m. service. John's if you can't, yeah, John's preaching <laughs> for the 12.30. Yes, <laughs> my husband. Uh, if you guys can get in the room, we have a lot of yeah. space and it's really different to be in the room. It's amazing, the atmosphere here. But we honor and appreciate everyone who's hopped on online. Thank Still you so much time. for joining us. See you later. Bye. Bye.